Ah, it's good to be back. A uh, slightly different uh, scene. I bought a plant, which is nice, really cute. And also got myself a lot of coffee because uh, I need a lot of coffee to get through this. Oh, by the way, yeah, I had all the infinity stones, but the thing is um, I lost them. So yeah, but it's still a cool mug. It can accommodate a shit ton of coffee, which is definitely one I need right now. I'm not sure if you saw this, but the AI started popping into every single software that I personally know and I personally use. I mean, even Spotify now has a freaking DJ who can recommend songs for you. And by the way, I've tested it out for, I think like a week now, and it's doing an okay-ish job, but I presume that the more I use it, the better it becomes. So that's why I'm trying to use it daily. But it's really interesting how this AI revolution actually helps us kind of like create better services. I'm not gonna be surprised if we're gonna have AI in our appliances. Imagine if, for example, this coffee would have been made by an AI that would be in sync with my wearables and it can see how good of a quality sleep I had. And based on that, it can actually put the right amount of caffeine. So I will have a very productive day, but I will not experience the crashes of ca caffeine in general, because usually you experience the crash because you drink too much caffeine, which I do. And then you just, um, at the end of the day, you start feeling very tired. So yeah, just imagine how that will be in the future. But till then, what can we do as product designers to kind of like use this technology to help us build better products? And for that, what I've been using lately, and I've been using it a lot, is ChatGPT. And I'm not using ChatGPT in the sense that you might be thinking. It's like, I'm not using ChatGPT to generate text for the websites or, you know, like generate email templates and stuff like that. I'm actually using it to start my research phase. So lately, I've started a couple of side projects and one of them was about cycling. When I don't know anything about cycling or cyclists, this to me was completely new. So what I did is I was like, instead of Googling it, let me try ChatGPT. And these are some of the questions that I asked before I even started designing, just to get a better understanding of the target user, just to understand how they function, what makes them tick, and what makes them engaged with a digital prompt. So before asking any question, the only thing that I assumed is that they will probably spend more time on their mobile phones rather than on desktop and tablet. And that's because most of them, especially the passionate ones, they ride like 100 miles a week, which is a lot. They spend a lot of time on their cycle. And obviously I presume that if they're gonna consume any type of content, then that's gonna be on mobile. And the thing is, I was right, based on the analysis from Microsoft Clarity. By the way, if you missed the video with Microsoft Clarity, I highly uh, you know, recommend you to check it out. It's gonna be here or here. I'm not sure exactly uh, how this will be positioned, but it will be here and also in the description. Highly, highly recommend you to check it out and also start implementing that into your digital products. But as I was saying is after looking at the analysis from Microsoft Clarity, I've seen that 80% of them are actually uh, using their mobile phones and only 20% of them are consuming the content on tablet or desktop, which was pretty much in sync with what I was thinking. So when I started my research, the first question I've asked was, what is the most used mobile app in the cycling community? And based on ChatGPT, the most popular mobile app in the cycling community was Strava. And personally, I did not even know that that app exists before starting this project. So obviously the first thing that I did, I went on their website, I checked their designs to see how they structured the page, to see the fonts that they're using, to see the colors, brands that they're working on, basically trying to understand as much as I can about this product. So this will help me basically create my own product based on their research. Because think about it, people who are building these types of apps or websites are actually product designers just like me. So they did the research before. So what I can do is to look through their creation or their digital product and figure out the things or the elements that I can take from their website 
and just add them to my digital product. So once I got a better feel of their website, the second question I've asked was, do cyclists usually like online communities? And the main reason I wanted to ask this question is because I was interested to see how much this community aspect is affecting their decision to use the digital products. And based on ChatGPT's answer, I've seen that they like using it because they like sharing knowledge, they like to support and motivate themselves, they like to uh, create and organize group rides and events, which is really interesting. And also obviously they like talking about gear and you know, like the latest thing. So that was pretty obvious. But the answers that ChatGPT gave me actually helped me kind of like get a better understanding on how they interact and why they prefer the online community. So now I know their favorite app. I know that they like online communities. The next question is, uh, how much are they willing to spend in general? I've asked the following question. How much money do passionate cyclists spend on average on their bicycle? To my surprise, what I found out is that they spend anywhere between 500 and 10,000 pounds for a bicycle, which is pretty insane. I did confirm this. I did a bit of research in the field in the sense that I went to some events and I started, you know, like questioning different cyclists to see how much money they spent on their bicycle. And I was amazed. Most of them spent anywhere between 5,000 to 7,000 pounds, which uh, it's more than dollars. But it's huge. I was like 7,000 pounds for a bicycle. And then I've learned that most of them actually spend years to build their perfect cycle, which was really, really interesting. So the main reason I asked about how much money they usually spend is because that will affect how the website will look and feel. Because obviously if you spend 10,000 pounds or 20,000 pounds on a bicycle, your experience should be a bit more towards the luxury side, not more, you know, like common, like normal. And this is a normal thing. If you try to look at, you know, websites like Rolex or Cartier or any brand, Louis Vuitton or whatever it is, you will see that it feels luxury. Even though they can create a website that it's normal, they prefer it to feel luxury because their customers are used to a certain standard. My next question was, what are the most popular colors amongst cyclists? And I asked that because I want to know how to design the website. What color should I use? Surprisingly, the most popular color was black, followed by red, blue, white, and neon. So what I've done, if you look now at the website, is I've actually took that advice and I used black as being a primary color. And then afterwards I used orange as an accent. And then I started asking questions about the marketing side as well. So one of the questions was, what is the most popular slash most followed content creator when it comes to cycling, because I did not know anything. So what I found out is that Global Cycling Network is one of the most followed ones. And then afterwards you have Francis Cade, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, hopefully I do, and Shane Miller, which I did not know anything about them, but Obviously, after this, I started looking on their Instagram, started Googling them just to get a better understanding of what their followers like. How do the images that they post look? Uh, you know, like just to get a better understanding of the quality that their followers are used to. So after asking all these questions, what I did, I took this data and I said like, yeah, it's 100% accurate. And I'm gonna build a product based on this. And this is how the product looks. And to my surprise, I've tested this out out to see what's the conversion rate and to see how many people that are landing on the website are actually joining the waiting list. And to my amazement, the conversion rate, it's actually pretty high. And if you think about it, these answers, I've got them from an AI. I did a bit of research on the side, like going to events and meeting people and asking questions, but most of the data that I've used to influence and shape what I did here was based on an AI. And it's amazing that the performance is there. So I was super surprised about, you know, like the quality of the data that ChatGPT provided. And to be honest, I am super excited about the future because if you think about it, imagine how many hours it will save us as product designers if we can do this. Just the basic thing, right? Because you can then confirm this by doing research yourself. But just to have an idea and not just fly blindly. You can be like, okay, I have a client, 
he has an e-commerce website, his customers like this, blah, blah, blah. You give them all the information and then afterwards, ChatGPT can be, or whatever it is, right? The AI can be like, oh yeah, this is what I will suggest you to start with, but then afterwards you obviously optimize it as you move along. This is absolutely amazing and I'm super excited about the future. I don't know if you can tell, like, tell this, but I'm super, super excited about what the future will hold. And the main reason I wanted to make this video is because I want to show you that you shouldn't be afraid of AI technology taking our jobs. It's quite the opposite. It will help us. It will enhance our jobs. It will make us create better digital products. It's not a tool that will replace humans. It's a tool that will enhance our capabilities and the things that we're gonna do. Because if you think about it, it's the same with the mobile phone. The mobile phone now, it's an extension of ourselves. We can actually take it, right? And then we can call someone, we can text someone that's across the globe. This wouldn't have been possible back in the days, but now it is and everyone is using it and it's a normal thing. You don't think about it, right? It's just like, yeah, I'm just gonna text someone. And I think that the same thing will happen with the AI. The future will be that you're gonna use it without even realizing it. So just embrace it. Don't run from it. If you're not using it yet, I will highly suggest you to hop on board, learn the technology, learn how you can use this into your own workflow so that you can create better digital products. And with this being said, thanks for being here with me. I really appreciate it. And let me know in the comments below, what is your opinion about AI? How are you planning to use AI or not? to create better digital products. Thank you for watching and uh, I'm gonna see you in the next one. Until then, um, I'm gonna go find my infinity stones. <laughs>